Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to take a look at one of the harder names to pronounce in the series but one of the more fun sieves to play in the series as we go over Joao the third and Portugal and before we get started please don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful or consider subscribing I am really working to get this channel up and going and your likes and your comments really help the channel out and also, if you do enjoy it, there are plenty of other guides on the channel to watch. And if you're already subscribed, leave me a comment to let me know what you think about Portugal, a very divisive sieve in the community, in the comment section down below. Portugal is, to me, like distilled potential. You don't get that potential automatically. You have to work for it. But if you can unlock the potential, the game just runs away and nothing can ever stop you. Casa da India, the Portuguese ability, gives you plus 50% towards all yields on trade routes, and your trade routes over water go 50% farther than anyone else's, which can be up to like 45 tiles away, which is basically half of the map. This does, however, come with the downside that all international trade routes have to be sent from a coastal city to a coastal city or a city with a harbor. Now please pay attention that this is only international trade routes, not domestic trade routes. I have seen the discourse online saying that this is a bit too restrictive, but I disagree. Yes, if you're playing on Pangaea, you're going to get much less out of this ability. And yes, if you're playing on Archipelago, you're going to get much more from this ability. But you'll be able to use this in almost every single game to at least some degree. A lot of city-states spawn coastally, and in the early game, those trade routes on like turn 30 will be giving you upwards of 40 gold per turn sometimes. If you aren't trading with city-states, the AI also builds coastal cities fairly often. You'll always have a chance to use at least some of your super buff trade routes that made so much gold, and gold is the most flexible yield in the game. Joao's ability, Porta de Querco, really hard to pronounce, gives you an often unremembered but equally important bonus. All units receive plus one sight, and this is kind of busted. You can see your barbs from four tiles away with a settler, and they can only move two tiles at a time, so you can move your settler before they can even be reached. You're also going to find natural wonders faster. You're going to get first meets with city-states more often, giving you free yields in your capital. You'll also find tribal huts easier, and you fog bust like nobody else, meaning that barbarians aren't really a big problem for Portugal. Add to that the plus one trade route per civilization meet, and you'll have eight more trade routes potentially than any other sieve in the game. And all of your trade routes, again, are super busted and broken. The navigation school is also pretty good. It's a buffed university that gives you science for every two coastal tiles in your city. And you can pretty easily get an extra three science at least from this. But this doesn't count towards your campus's adjacency bonus, so it doesn't really stack with government cards like someone like Australia's bonus might. So it really does sort of leave them out of the conversation of better unique buildings, but that's not really what makes them good. They're good because you don't have to build them. You're always going to be able to buy them pretty much. You're going to be saving your hammers for other things. And they also give you great admiral points, which is situationally pretty useful. Just make sure that you never pick up the Hermetic Society with Portugal because those alchemical schools always replace your navigation school. And I think the navigational school is much better than the Hermetic Society's whole kit. So just avoid them entirely. Their unique unit, the Now, and their unique improvement, the Feitoria, go hand in hand, because you need to use the Now to build the Feitoria. The Now is a careful replacement with a free promotion, and Feitorias are improvements that provide Portugal with plus one production and plus four gold on a trade route, and those also, I believe, get boosted with your ability. But they have to be built in cities that you do not own. So you have to put them in other civilizations, and it's the only improvement that does this. They have to be placed on the coast and can't be stacked adjacent to each other, and they must be built next to a luxury or bonus resource. Now this is useful, and it does buff up your already buffed trade rounds, but I find this bonus to be really forgettable, and I only ever build them for the era score. Drell is one of my favorite sieves to play as, because I like high gold games. You need to play a safe early game, and you need to be scouting heavily to find sieves and get your trade routes. 
I do find, however, that it's really easy to get a golden age with Portugal early. Your scouts have such good vision, and you'll get early meets really often, and trade routes really often, and you're going to get astrology boosted, helping you get your faith going pretty easily. And once you have four cities up on the coast, you can have your trade routes going, and at that point, most of the game is hyper simplified. You will be making so much gold that you can do anything you want. But you have to remember to keep expanding to get even more trade routes. Not all cities need to be built coastally. Those cities that can be built coastally should be building harbors and lighthouses to get the extra trade routes. Your non-coastal cities should be building markets and commercial hubs to get extra trade routes. Once it comes online, you're just going to buy your way to victory. I find it pretty easy to get upwards of 28 to 30 trade routes a game as uh, India or Portugal, sorry, and it just makes the game just so easy at some point. To me, Portugal works best as a science or a domination sieve. You buy all your campuses, you buy your settlers, you purchase great scientists with gold, and you get my point. Just buy everything, because you're going to have enough gold to do it. Domination victory for Portugal is kind of weird. They are very good at it, but you want to do it late, not early, because you don't want to have uh, military emergencies called against you very often. You want to buy all your troops and don't get declared on by the whole world, so you need to be doing some diplomacy at first. But once you can buy four jet bombers, the whole world is yours no matter what and nobody can stop you. Both victories get a 10 out of 10 for me. Diplomacy comes next. You get so much money, you'll win all emergencies. Just use your cash to purchase important engineers to build your diplomacy wonders like the Statue of Liberty and the Patala Palace. But I find diplomacy is a very boring win condition, so 8 out of 10. Culture doesn't work that well, but it also doesn't work very poorly for Portugal either. You just have no real bonus towards it unless you feel that trade route distance is a bonus, because trade routes allow you to increase tourism on other civilizations. It's a little bland, but you will be buying all the great works in the game, and you can do that, so 6 out of 10. Finally, there's religion. Just don't worry about religion as Portugal. You have nothing pushing you here, but you can do it if you want to ignore your other bonuses, so 3 out of 10. Portugal's divisive. They have all the money that Mali makes, with a malice that is far less than Mali's. I see Mali as the culture religion gold sieve, and Portugal as the refined, better version of a science domination gold sieve. Don't play them on Pangaea. If you're running fractal or continents, you'll have a wild time buying everything in a new city and getting it boosted by turn 1. They're an A plus sieve for me, not S, I have changed my stance on them a little bit. Only because you are slightly map dependent, unlike my other S tier sieves like the Kamai. Thank you everyone for watching, and let me know what you think about Portugal in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.